Hey guys, this week's tip comes to us via request. We've got a couple folks out there that have asked about how they can use the open vendor setting within SMS plus the PDA to help make their ordering processes a little bit more efficient. So that's what we're going to review. If you're already familiar with ordering with SMS, you already know that when we create POs, we're utilizing and working with specific vendors and only those items on file for that specific vendor. What this feature allows us to do is create what we call an open vendor, and it allows access to the entire item file within SMS. Pretty cool stuff. So we're going to start off in SMS Pro. You can see I'm in a basic item cost view here, and I've got my vendors window open right here. I got there by clicking the auxiliary menu and then vendor. Now what we have to do to make open vendor work is actually create a new vendor and apply that little setting that allows us to see all the items within the file. I've already got one set up here, mine's here at the very bottom, and it's numbered 999. You can see I've labeled it here open as well. Now you can call this really anything you want. Some guys call it ZZZ, some guys call it 999, it really just is a preference to you. Now if you don't have this vendor in your system already, all you have to do to add it is click this little plus sign right here. Then you'll go in with a number, put in whatever number that you want, and then go ahead and label it so you know what the heck it is later. Once that's done, what you want to do is expand the view a little bit. And we do that by selecting the vendor, then clicking this little down arrow for more details. And you'll see the entire key to this process, sure we can fill in all the rest of this information, but the entire key to this process is right here in the category flag. When we type the word any in here, that ensures us that we're allowed to see all the items within the item file, regardless of vendor, under this particular number. Now let's go put it in practice and show you how this thing works. Okay, so I've hopped over into the PDA application. Mine is just open in Windows Internet Explorer so we can all see it here. You're going to be using a purpose-built device from one of various manufacturers. Now the reason we do this is because we're real world types of guys, right? We want to make sure that we're using technology to make our processes a little bit easier and hopefully more efficient. This is what the PDA allows us to do. Instead of sitting in the back office looking at a screen or looking at a spreadsheet, we can actually go walk the floor, see the shelves, and see what's going on out there in the real world. That's what we're going to go through right now. Everything that we're going to go through right here could be done in the back office. You just get to it on the buying tab in the extended module. But let's see what the PDA allows us to do. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go into the purchasing section since we're going to create a purchase order. I'm going to go ahead and create or hit the more button here so that we can create a new purchase order. Let me go ahead and select that as well. Now at this point what we could do is we could just scan a UPC to pull something up or we could type in the vendor ID. It's very important though that we select the proper vendor. If we just scan a UPC now it's going to default to the main vendor within the item file. But what we want to do is use that open vendor that we created. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in 999 since that's what we created and hit enter. And now we're going to be in the beginning of the purchase order menu. Now that we've actually started and entered in the purchase order, you would just start adding items. Typically you would just start walking down the aisle and scanning with a gun. What I'm going to have to do is do this manually. So I'm going to hit the add items button and I'm going to go ahead and start with just a few codes I'm going to manually enter. Okay, we're going to start with this code and I'm going to go ahead and order two cases. So I'm going to hit two and enter on my keyboard. Again, you would do this on your PDA. You can see the cursor is already up here in the next code just waiting for us to scan it. So I'm going to go ahead and type mine in, hit enter, and you'll see I got another item come up. And for this one, I want to order three cases. So three and enter again. And again, my cursor is right back up here waiting on the PLU. I'll hit in one, two, three, enter. And for this time, oh, let's order five cases. We feel like we're doing pretty good. So those three items that I put in, they're added to the purchase order already. I'm going to go ahead and hit the order button down here and suspend this purchase order because I want to resume it in the back office where I got a little bit larger screen and some more room to work with. So we'll hit the suspend button and you'll see that purchase order is now suspended. All right, well the hard part's done. All that walking is over. I'm in my back office now and I'm within SMS. You can see I started off on the manage tab, but to finish out our purchase order, we got to hop over into the buying module. So we're going to hop over there, then go into the extended module. And whoops, there it is. You can see it right there on our home screen, that order that we created. You can see the vendor is 999, that one that we made. It's open vendor. Let's go ahead and highlight this guy, open him up, and see what we got. Now this view here, once we've jumped into the purchase order, should be pretty familiar. We've done quite a few videos with this almost exact same setup. This time though, what we're going to do is go ahead and go into the item, so we're just going to double click it, and a couple things I'm going to show you. We're now into the item, you can see the cases that we've ordered here, the cost and all that good stuff, but I want to show you down here, under our authorized vendor section, you can see I got Nestle down here. They are my authorized vendor, even though we're in a purchase order under vendor 999, which we've labeled as open. So that's pretty cool. Now how the heck do we get this item over to a purchase order that we can send to Nestle? Well, pretty simple. This little button right up here called move, just hit it. Let's watch what happens. We get a new screen here, and now what we're going to do is take from our 999 open vendor PO, 
We're going to create a new PO under Nestle because, after all, SMS only purchases for specific vendors. And that's all we're going to do. To do it, we just hit the Create button. A new purchase order is created, and we've got a couple new buttons up here. What do these new buttons do? Well, that's pretty easy once you get it explained. You can see we've got a Move and a Move All. Now, the difference is Move is just going to move this particular line from our open vendor, 999 purchase order, to this new vendor purchase order we created right down here for Nestle. So if we hit Move, it's just going to move this specific line. If I hit the Move All, what it will do is it will take every item that's in our order. I only got three here, but let's say you've got 1,500 on here because you had a pretty big store and you walked the thing. If you hit Move All, all the items associated with this particular vendor will be put on this particular PO. That's a pretty cool little thing. So let's just hit the Move All and I'll show you what happens. When we do it, you get a little message that pops up. Are you sure you want to do this? Oh, heck yeah, we want to do this. We hit OK. You'll see you'll get a confirmation here that we've moved those items from one transaction to the next. When we click OK there, we'll be sent right back to our purchase order that we did with 999 because we still got two additional lines that we got to mess with. Now let's go ahead and address the second item on our list. To get into this particular item, item number 101, just double click it. And now we're into a typical item view like you're used to within a purchase order. But I want to show you something. This one's kind of a cool example. We've got two vendors here that we could order this from. We've got an authorized one, this J.M. Snyder, who's selling it for a little bit less. And then we've got Nestle as well, just not the authorized vendor. So what we're going to do, the exact same steps. We're going to come up here, hit the Move button, and you'll see a little bit different view this time. What this is telling us is we've got a PO already open and created for Nestle. And this particular item can be purchased from Nestle. We can see it costs us a little more. So if we want to go ahead and add it to the open purchase order that we already have, we can just move it right there. Or if we want to order at the lower price for J.M. Schneider, we simply create just like we did before. So we'll hit the Create button. And now we're going to come up to J.M. Schneider here and move all. Just like we did before, you're going to have a message that pops up, and then you're going to have a confirmation, and we're right back to where we started. Okay, we've only got one item left. This is a pretty easy process. We're going to go to the item, double-click it. Now we're actually into the item. We can see that we ordered five. If I scroll down a little bit here, we can see this is a new vendor. We know what to do next. We come up here. We're going to move it from our open vendor PO to the Molson O'Keefe vendor PO. We're going to have to create it because we don't have an existing PO open for this particular vendor, so we'll hit the Create button. We have the option to move the single item, or we can just move everything associated with it. If we've got a bunch of items on our order, I'll go ahead and hit Move All. We'll get a message that says, you sure you want to do it? Yep, we sure do. Then we get a confirmation that says, the transaction has been moved over. And you can see, at this point, there are no items left. I can come over here to the lines. There are no items left here on our PO that we created for the open vendor. So this is really a process thing at this point, depending on how you want to set it up. You can come over here to the totals, and you could close the order so that the order stays on the system, or you could go ahead and hit mark as void since it's blank and there's nothing really on it. And then you just confirm the void and go from there. Okay, excellent work. Now notice what happened. We closed out that purchase order that was 999 for open vendor, and notice, three purchase orders were created, those ones that we just did and the ones that we moved the items to. Those are right here. So now to, to go through the rest of the process on these, you're just going to do what you're used to normally doing. Open up the purchase order. You can look at the header and all that good stuff. You can add additional items from that particular vendor. Notice we're on vendor 507, Nestle. You can add all the items from them just like normal. We can look at the lines, make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be, review the totals, close the order, and then everything that happens normally with that particular vendor happens. That's pretty cool. Now there's really no need to go through these other two purchase orders because they're the exact same process. You open them up, you review the items, add anything that you need to it, review your totals, close the purchase order out. Now just think about what we did. We took our PDA out on the floor, we ordered as we walked through the aisles, and you know what? We made one large purchase order. We came to the back office where we got a little bit bigger screen, a keyboard, all that good stuff to work with. We split the various items out on the specific orders that we created from our open vendor, and then all we did is just what we normally do. We go right back here to this screen and go ahead and process those purchase orders out. Pretty cool stuff. Now remember, if you have any requests or any ideas for tips of the week, please feel free to email us, sales at locksoftware.com. Until next time, have a great day.